Here, take this. I think I forgot my pen. Oh, crap. Oh, right. oh. Wow. Yeah. Was it one of these? Uh, I'll just put some sit over here. Uh, no, I don't remember. I left it by the computer, so. Huh. Oh, well. My lock. Sorry, bud. Oh, is it this one? No. Okay, so first thing, um, as always, do your starter procedure. You're going to make today's session um, week six and do your IO mapping, as always. So delete path, default path, delete path, default path, delete path, Oops, delete path, and default. For those of you who are just joining us, there's a flash drive floating around. You just need to copy the drum files folder from it. Um, you're going to oh, do your starter procedures and make a new session for class six. Just remember to follow the trail, making sure that your file hierarchy ends up in your session folder the way it's planned. So you should still be in your folder on the data drive. Um, today what we're going to do is, is uh, a couple things. Um, the first thing we're going to do today is, is we're going to talk about um, building, slicing, and assembling rhythmic things on the grid. So again, today's task is to kind of get you more familiar with editing tools um, and utilizing editing tools and some editing functions. So let's talk about some basic editing functions, okay? And then I'll show them to you. Uh, we did a couple of them last week, but in your notes, um, who has flash drive, by the way? Flash drive that one here, so you hand it off. In your notes, first thing I want you to write down, a couple key commands that you're gonna need to know, and then I'm gonna have you do some step-by-step based on what you see on screen. So, some of the most basic editing key commands that you'll need are copy, paste, or copy, cut, paste, undo, and duplicate. A lot of the ones that you're going to use when you're cutting up tracks. So first things first, morning. Command C for copy. Ah, got it. So you just put it in up to Command C for copy. <clears throat> command X for cut. You can use the bus make sure it's straight up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And command V for paste. So command C for copy, command X for cut, command V for paste. So all those are command functions. And then command D for duplicate. I think we did duplicate last week. Command D for duplicate. Command Z for undo. 
And then let me walk through some of these steps. But those are all going to be very basic functions. Anybody know the difference between cut and copy? Cut and copy, what's the difference? You guys probably use word processing. What's the difference? Cut and copy. Yes, sir. Uh, doesn't cut just take it completely out and store it with zip and copy uh, just uh, well, just copies the, the, the piece of information without deleting it so you can paste it or uh, duplicate it somewhere else? Got it. Perfect. So, you know, just like you said, copy is, is literally going to make a copy of it. Cut it. Cutting, when you extract the info, will actually remove it. Sometimes cutting is the best option because the goal was to move it to a, a, a single piece to a different location, which required the removal of its original location. So there are going to be times you're going to need to do that. Um, but let me go ahead and show this to you. Let's do some step-by-steps. This is what you guys are going to do in your next drill. You're going to go to step one, file import audio. All right, so step one. You're gonna, today what we're going to be doing is building some rhythms off some basic sample tracks. There's only three of them, so it's not that difficult. But it's basically going to be file import audio. File import audio. Step two, navigate to your drum sample folder wherever you saved it. So it's for you, it should have been on data drive, your name, drum samples for MUS 239. So step two, navigate to the drum sample folder. Again, step one, file import audio. Step two, navigate to the drum sample folder. Step three, import kick, snare, and hat. So you'll see all three of these pieces of audio. Kick, snare, and hat. Somebody else copying the flash drive at the moment? Oh, is it, have you copied it yet? Oh, what did you copy? Oh, no, no. You need the, just the drum box. That. Drum samples for MUS 239. Yeah, the hall's probably got like six or seven gigs of that on. Yeah, so when you get the flash drive, you're just going to copy the folder that says drum samples for MUS 239. The other stuff's got like DaVinci Resolve and some very large files. Uh, what was step two? Step two is navigate to the drum sample folder. Step three is choose case there. You should be able to cancel the other copy, yeah. and then and then just once you're done with that, you can sling somebody else. Okay, so step three was of course selecting these three. Step four, copy all using the copy all function. Copy all. Step five, press done. That's a simple one. Once we're in. It should say, where do you want to go next? So step six is open. You guys have done this, so these are real simple procedures. All right, and this is where we are. So in step seven, in step seven, we're gonna go ahead and move, uh, move these to a new track, okay? So, uh, here, let me help you. Here, what else you got? You got? Okay, and you're only gonna copy the drum folders. Make sure it goes to the folder with your name on it on the data drive. So step seven, choose new track. So it's six. Uh, hit open. It's the step before this that just says which folder are you, you're going to fall to. Okay. Okay. So we went to step seven, create a new track. Now let's take a quick timeout. How many of you are musically inclined? Show of hands. Musically inclined individuals. Okay. So for those of you who are not, this may take a little bit more effort. Uh, actually, I could probably just uh, I could just draw this on the board for you. For those who are maybe not so much, what this exercise will require. Um, this exercise essentially will require the ability to understand the four four bar. So if you're familiar with the four four bar, you won't have much of an issue. Uh, actually, let me build a pattern on screen for you real quick, and I'll draw it for you. It's going to be really, I might actually, you might, you might get more out of the visual on the screen. Worst case, I'll draw it up here if you can't see it much. What I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to build a single bar, okay? One bar meaning one minute, okay? Remembering that if we switch to grid mode and we switch our main time counter to bars and beats, then the grid will represent measure by measure, beat by beat, okay? So what I'm going to do is, for most of you, you left your, your workstations like this. It should still be like this. 
In your next step, change main counter to bars and beats. So step eight, change main counter to bars and beats. Okay, main counter to bars and beats. Not too bad, right? Quick, simple thing. You know you have it if you see those lines in there, where it says one, and then there's a line there, and then one. So that's uh, measure one, beat one. Then switch to grid mode. So in your next step, activate grid mode. Is that step nine? Activate grid mode. Did that copy okay? Did you get the, the drum files? Any? Just, just drag and drop it to your folder. Where's your folder on the data drive? You can if you is that it? yeah. Okay. Don't click it. Don't click it so it's in. Make sure you see okay, yeah. Drag that folder. Just drag it, click it, drag it, whatever. Once it's done, it's probably done already. Double click that. Just see what it says. If it shows your files in there, it's fine. Or if you just look and check. I'm sorry, was that step nine? All right, step 10. Step 10, change grid resolution. It's a quarter note. So the grid resolution's over here. Change grid res resolution to quarter note. Now, after you import the files, what happens if I hit double click on the Zoom tool, after those files are in. Double click on the Zoom tool, what happens? You guys remember? The body of my session, double click on the Zoom tool, what happens? Right, do you remember this? So, not before you have audio, but once you have audio, if you double click on the Zoom tool, it essentially will magnify so you're only seeing the, the waveforms that exist from beginning to end. So if there were duplicates of these way down the line, it would show a big view, a big broad view, but because these are the only ones we have right now, this is what it shows. So what we're going to do is uh, it's very interesting how we're going to cut this up. But I'm going to show you the, the professional way to cut these kinds of rhythms. I'm going to zoom out. So double click on uh, step 11, double click the zoom tool. It gets you in nice and tight so you see what you're supposed to be looking at. All right, so step 11, double click the zoom tool. Step 12, zoom out until you see one full bar. Not bad. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to zoom out. This is, these are your zoom functions here, your, your quick zooms right here. You're going to zoom out so you see one full bar. So you can see one bar one beat one, bar one beat two, bar one beat three, bar one beat four, and there's bar two. See that so far? Okay, so what we're going to do is basically we're going to create uh, a one bar rhythm. The simple catch with this is, and I think if we do, let's see. Slide at the last. Ah, yes, okay. So basically, um, I'm just going to build a real basic pattern. Uh, and again, I'm going to do it on a measure by measure. And right now, our BPM is, is a quarter note equals 120, and you can see it here. First thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to reorder, and this is just by default, uh, however your, your system came in or your audio came in. We're going to reorder which tracks are listed first. So in your next step, I think it's step 13, we're going to move the kick to be in position one at the very top by clicking on the nameplate and dragging. Kick to the top. And then snare is going to come second and then hat. So essentially it'll go kick, snare, hat. So step 13, you're just going to click and drag these into order. Once they're in order, the rhythms are very easily built, but there's some weird stuff we have to do to it. Shouldn't be too hard though. Okay, cool. All right, in our next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build four on the floor. Now, just so you know, anybody use samples? These are actually um, 
uh, you know, I made these samples with a class. You know, we just took a drum set, threw it in the storage room. I like big open tones because I have a ton of direct tones. These are very direct, though. This is close mic, single close mic um, in a storage room, though, so there's a little bit of ambience in the, in the tail end of the waveform. The thing about it is if you use samples, well, let's say, how many of you do live music, perform live music, okay? How many, okay, so for those of you who perform live music and those of you who perform samples, how many of you do both? Anybody do both? Okay, so here's the catch, and I'm going to show it to you how we build this grid. When you're working with a sample, the sample doesn't take into effect a lot of times. The sample doesn't take into effect or the idea or the concept that in the envelope of the sound, it takes a little bit of energy or in time to wind up to a strong downbeat. And what happens is, is the, the samples that you see in front of you, if you zoom back into them, you know, I had you guys zoom out so you could see them, but if you zoom back into them, you'll see that there's a bit of a discrepancy between the beginning of the file and the beginning of the sample. You see there's a bit of an issue there. See how there's space? And furthermore, if you were to look at, like, let's look at the kick, for instance. You see that be between the beginning of the kick and the strength of the kick, which really the strength of the kick could be viewed as here, there's a time discrepancy. When it comes to working with samples, a lot of times what they do is they do their very best to nudge that out. They eliminate the windup as best they can. The problem with that is, is it makes it very choppy and unnatural. If you're a live musician, when you're trying to land on the downbeat, what do you do? You anticipate the downbeat, and whatever you're, is supposed to land on the downbeat, you have to be ready for that and, and your actual uh, biggest point of potential energy, the attack happens at the downbeat. Does that make sense? So like if I'm a guitar player, I don't just wait until the downbeat happens to try to strum. I strum so that my strum follow through ends at the downbeat. Does that make sense? So like that's how that gets performed. Where a sample a lot of times doesn't have the beginning part of that. The sample doesn't include the windup. It gets it cuts out that information and then it starts at the beginning of the grid. What we're going to do is we're going to build out the grid. We have to use a particular function that's going to assist us in order to build off the grid, and then we're gonna slide the front end of these samples back so that they look more like a natural performance, okay? So what are we on, step 14 coming up? All right, so step 14, we're gonna switch to shuffle mode. Step 14, switch to shuffle mode. Now this is the kind of stuff you guys are gonna do all the time if you're cutting stuff up. Now shuffle mode, by definition, as of last week as we talked about it, moves everything to the leftmost position. So we're going to use that as, as to, to our advantage. Okay. What we're then going to do is there's a little button up here. It looks like this. Not to be confused with this one. This one's a little different. But this one over here, that's called tab to transients. You are going to activate in step 14, activate tab to transients. All right. It's this little icon just above. Now, step 15 will be a simple two-step process. Well, of course, if I break it down, it might, it won't be. Step 15, choose the selector tool. Selector tool is this guy up here. We talked about him a little bit last week. Choose your selector tool, the one that has a little waveform icon right there. Choose the selector tool. In step 16, go to the kick drum track in the edit window and click in this open space at the beginning. So essentially you're gonna click into the clip. All right, was that 16 or 17? 16? Okay, now you, and when you click into the clip, you need to be before the waveform, all right? An easy way to go to the beginning, so here's a shortcut, you might just wanna highlight this. Um, in step 17, Hit return. Now return, if you can just identify this and highlight it and say return, essentially means to send to the beginning of the session. Essentially send the play, what they call the playhead, but essentially it's playback position to the beginning of the session. So send the playback position to the beginning of the session. So when I hit return, what's going to happen is, notice I clicked over here. When I hit return, it's going to throw it all the way left. So now it's at the very beginning. Follow me? So it's going to kick it back. So it forces us to make sure we start at the beginning of that clip, just because it puts it at the beginning of the song. Step 18, uh, hit tab. Now what tab to transient is, or does, 
Transient means a piece of audio that comes and goes. So tapping the transient is, is a, a, a way to identify where the beginning of a beat takes place. Does that make sense? Now, we still have to identify where the strength of the beat resides. So I'm going to hit tab once and watch what happens. Oh, that's not a good sign. Hold on. Let's go back. Oh, hold on. Let me switch. Maybe I'm always on. No, no, no. Uh, downside. I don't know why it's not recognizing this. Let me see if it does it with the next one. If it doesn't do it with a kick, you guys are going to have to manually do it. Because I didn't activate it. Silly. Okay, now let's take a look. Ah, oh, it's still doing it. Why is it doing it? Hold on, we may have to redirect your tab to transient preference. I know you have yours open. Yours didn't work either, did it? Yeah, it didn't work. Sorry, something needs to be turned off on the in the transient scope. Hold on. Tab to transient. Ah, crap. We're going to have to do... Sure. By default, I think we're going to have to do work around. Give me two seconds here, because if this is the case... Sorry, this might not this might not work because the transient is not reading. Oh man. I might have to see if there's another way to get this to run. I think what I'll do is I'll put you in the drill. I'll have you do this manually, and then I'll put you in the drills. And while while you're in the drills, I'll figure out the workaround of this. Typically, by default, most systems are set to are set up with a transient level that's low enough to not miss something like the kick that you just see on screen. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe it was deactivated, but I got to figure out how um, because the shortcut should still work. But I think the threshold level set too high. So let me look at it. What we're gonna do is it, what step are we on now? 19 or 18? 18. What we're gonna have to do in this instance is is in instead of hitting tab, uh, replace 18 with manually selecting the top of the first peak of the waveform that you see. 
So you'll actually manually select the top of the first peak of the waveform that you see. So notice this is the first peak. What we're going to do with this is we're going to have to do a uh, that sucks. Hold uh, shift return, and the next step is shift plus return. What that's going to do is it'll highlight from where you are to the very beginning. In step 20, hit delete. Now in step 20, what we're going to do is we'll hit delete, and what happens in shuffle mode is it sends it to the left. In step 21, you're going to repeat steps, I think it's 18 through 20 for the snare and the hat. So in step 21, you're going to repeat steps 18 through 20 for, for the snare and the hat. So you're literally just going to go in, manually pick the first peak. See, like in the snare instance, we could just write right about here. Shift return, hit delete. We're going to go down to the hat. Same thing. Now the hat, you can see, has a bit of an issue. What's the issue with the hat? Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to identify it. What we can do is there's a zoom function for the waveform. And if we blow it up here, we can kind of see uh, this, uh, it kind of blow up. So I would actually kick it off over about right here. So if you zoom in, see this little, it's a plus or up and down above the waveform there. You can hold shift and return and hit delete. Now, once we've done that, everybody now is assigned to the grid at the, at the strength of the starting point, not the wind up to the down, but the strength of the starting point. So in step 22, you are then going to build a rhythmic pattern. So what we're going to do first in order to do that is, a, is zoom out. You may still have been zoomed out for your one bar. Zoom out for your one bar. In step 22, switch to grid mode. So let's go back to grid. Now, first things first, I'm just going to do something very basic. So um, in order to do that, I'm just going to do four on the floor with the kick. So you're going to switch to grid mode and step 23, hi, uh, highlight only one beat. Bar one, beat one of the kick. So notice in the grid, it's bar one, beat one, all the way up to, to that um, bar one, beat two. But you know you only have one beat if it says length one. Okay, so one quarter note, essentially. So you're just going to take one quarter note of the kick. In step uh, 24, you're just going to hit Command D three times. One, two, three. Now all of a sudden, if we go and listen to this, so let me make sure that the volume's on a decent level. Now you notice it's a little snappy. We're going to fix that because of what we had to do to align it to the grid. We're going to bump it back in a moment. We got to, in order to remedy that, we have to do a couple things first. Um, but so far, so good, right? Uh, what step of that? 24. We're moving on to 25. In step 25, we're going to copy two bars of the snare. Step 25, copy two bars of the snare. Step 26, hit Command D and duplicate. So we're going to copy a two bar section, hit Command D to duplicate. So now if we open that up, you, you can see I just did those two. I'll bump this down so you, it's not as. Now there's a bit of a trick, or, or well, it's a trick, but it's a it's a bit of an issue. You can see that something's wrong with the pattern with the snare, and we're gonna have to modify. It. It's a it's the downside to looping like this, but it, in order to allow the reason we left the clip as a two bar is so that the decay of the snare sounds natural. In the next step, triple click one two three, okay, triple click one two three, the snare clips. 
Triple click the snare clips. It should select all. One, two, three. In the next step, switch to the grabber tool. Yep, one, two, three. And triple click is literally just a one, two, three. Real quick. Just like you double click, but it's a triple instead of a two. So in your next step, grab, choose the grabber tool. After you choose the grabber tool, you're going to slide the snare one beat to the right. What this will do is it puts the snare on count two and count four instead of count one and count three, where it should be. So we're going to slide the snare one beat to the right so that it's on beat two and on beat four. You can see it if you look up at the bar and beat section. <clears throat> so far, so good? What number are we on? You guys are doing good? Awesome. Wow, it's a lot of steps, right? Uh, are we on step 30 or are we just finished step 30? On 30. On 30. All right, step number 30. Switch the grid mode to... We'll do eighth notes for now. We could do sixteenths, but I might just do eighth. Well, yeah, let's do eighths. Switch the grid mode to eighth notes. Step thirty. Switch the grid mode to eighth notes. Step thirty-one. Select one eighth note of the hat. Now you know you got an eighth note if you just if it's just one grid group. And again, it'll up at the up at the top. It'll say you know uh, 480 is what it'll say. It's a division of that, but you're gonna select in the grid. You'll choose an eighth note. Okay. In the next step, you're gonna hit Command D to fill the bar. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit it seven times to fill the bar. And what will happen is, is it'll look like this. Command D to duplicate again. D, 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 D. If we play it, then at this point. Now, before I had mentioned the possibility of switching to the 16th, you don't have to write this down. If we had chosen the 16th, we could essentially just do this to go to 16th instead of 8th. Now there's not a lot of variation on this hat, the hat's kind of boring. But the reason I didn't elect to that is because I knew that the hat is a little too rigid. Uh, so it's not going to sound awesome. We need, an, we need an extra sample of the hat. A lot of times what I'll do is I'm, if I'm going to build it like this, I'll take a, a, a... Well, actually when I was sampling in the, in the uh, open space, what I did is I did right hand snare, left hand snare, right hand hat, left hand hat. Because of the variance and the difference, so if I ever wanted to do 16th notes, it would literally go. And then I did additional downbeat emphasis hats. So if you build it right, if you sample it right, and you have the right core values to bring in, then you then it'll sound more natural. Right now, it still kind of, it sounds very robotic. Uh, the only thing that really should sound that robotic is typically the kick. You know, the snare should sound somewhat solid, but not like it's always using the same sample. But you'll get there when you're using your samples eventually. After this is done, what we're going to do is we kind of have to buy some space. And so this is where it gets a little weird. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight. Actually, you know what? We'll just do one, two, three. Let's, uh, what's step number are we on? 33, triple click the kick. One, two, three. Triple click the kick. In step four. Oops. In step four, hold shift, click the snare. So you triple click the kick, hold shift, click the snare clip. Holding shift still, click the hat clip. So you said triple click the snare. The kick. Triple, triple click the kick, single click the uh, hold shift. Single click the snare, hold shift, single click the hat. Did, did it work? Okay. 
Yeah, it's a lot of clicking, but you'll get used to it. Then, while still holding shift, click bar two, beat two, down here on the end. All right, see this up, up screen? So click, single click, bar two, beat two at the end of the, the last snare clip. Single click while holding shift. So this is what the move looks like. One, two, three, hold shift, one, hold shift, one, hold shift, one. Essentially, we're trying to include everybody. Yes, sir. I'm trying to move my uh, my snare after it's like this like not. It's not really too good. And you might have. Well, let's see what it says. Yeah. Oh, because you can't. You got to go back to grid mode. Yeah, you're just gonna go. Yeah, exactly. All right. From here, what we need to do is we need to move this back. I'm going to give you one. I mean, this is not the fastest step, but I'm going to give it to you for practicality purposes. In your next step, switch to spot mode. I know this is a bit cumbersome. It's quite a bit of steps for this segment today. But we're just trying to get a rounded overall sense of what we're using. Switch to spot mode. Choose the grabber tool. So choose the spot mode, and then in your next step, choose the grabber tool. At this point, when we click, when we try to drag, we're going to move this to the right. So what number are we on at the moment? 38. All right, in step 38, click to drag the clips. You'll notice a dialog box comes on screen. So this is how spot mode works. So you're going to click with the grabber to drag, but it won't let you do it in. Spot mode particularly looks for instance of what you already have to know of where you're going to move to. The reason we use spot is just to make this move easy. Like this happens all the time in music. We know we're gonna we're gonna build a pattern, and we know that pattern's gonna be dropped at you know bar 104, beat three. Why bother dragging it all the way over there? Because it's gonna take you a while to pinpoint where that's at. If you already know what bar and beat you want, you can literally just type it into the to the dialog using spot mode. In this instance, we're gonna shuffle this whole thing to bar two, beat one. So in your next step where it says start, type in bar two, beat one. Really all it's going to take for you is to type in the number two. Right, bar two, beat one. And then you're just going to hit OK. What this will do is it's going to throw it over. All right, bar two, beat one. It's going to throw it over to bar two, beat one. Now, at this point in time, we could do this, okay? At this point in time, I could say, oh, you know, forget the snares decay. I'm going to go back to grid just for a sec. This is my loop as I have it. I could just literally just copy-paste it just like this. Or not even copy-paste it, just duplicate it. The only issue with this is it'll be very choppy because of the fact that it starts at a cut on the, on the cut of a file, right? One, two, three. If I click this, double click back to where we are, and I just push play. And on some instances, the snare gets to fully decay, and on other instances, the snare doesn't fully decay. Notice that the way the decay line is here, it gets chopped off where this one goes all the way to the end. We could go with this. Again, it's gonna feel more choppy. So a lot of times what I like to do, I'll do that if I'm just writing a song and I'm never going to use those drums. If I'm never going to use those drums, let's just roll it. You know, but if like if that, sometimes you're just going to do that. Sometimes you're going to do it as a, as a means of just basing some sort of time frame. You're going to sub it in with something else you're going to do later. But in this instance, what we'd like to do is restore it back to its original sample properties. In order to do that in your final, well, actually your second to last step here, you're going to switch to slip mode, switch to slip mode,
You're going to switch to slip mode. You're going to select, and actually, let's see, how would this work out? One, two, three, oh yeah, okay. You're going to select the trimmer tool, and your next step, select the trimmer tool. And each clip that you see that we cut off on the front end will now, in your, in your next step, get peeled back to the left. I'll show you what it looks like. You're going to have to manually do this. Now, if you wanted to accurately do this, there's a means of a method you could use, but it, it will take more time to do it in this format. But all, essentially, all you're going to do is this. Remember how we cut off the waveforms at the beginning? Oops. All you're going to do is switch to slip mode, choose the trim tool, and you're basically going to go clip by clip pulling them left. And what'll happen is it'll stop. It's kind of weird, but it'll stop where the clip began. So it won't let you go beyond that point. So you literally can go in to each of these clips and, the, and pull them to the left. Now, the reason we couldn't have done this sooner uh, or before we did the copy paste is because when we go and copy paste, it's going to put these into the wrong position. So we have to just manually go clip by clip. It, it'll take you like, in, in reality, less than 30 seconds to do clip by clip, you're just pulling them left, pull it left, pull it left, pull it left. You see how it's working? Pull it left, pull it left. Uh, and I think that was it. Oh, and then the, actually that worked out. Now, now what we get to do in our final step here is we can actually just duplicate this as, as a process. There are a couple things we're, we're gonna wanna do with this later. So maybe next week, I don't know if we'll have time for it this week, but maybe next week we can talk about the grouping segments because it helps with this process. Once that rhythm is designed, I would like for you to make a full four bar phrase. So what I'm gonna have you do, and this is kind of weird, okay? Um, but, but this is how it works. You're gonna go ahead and select grid mode, you got to go back to grid. Just remember this. When you copy paste in time, you got to go back to grid. Okay, so you're going to go back to grid mode. You're going to highlight where the kick starts in this section one bar before the kick. Or I'm sorry, one beat before the kick. Now, we're still in, at this point, we are, uh, oh, wrong version. Let me go back to eighth. You should be in eighth note mode. Ah, we might not be able to get away with it. Eighth note, eighth note. Oh, uh, we can do it with a kick, but we can't do it with a snare. Actually, let's do this. After you switch to grid, please take your um, your grid to 30 second notes. Now, I'll show you the reason why. This is just the fastest way to do this. So change your grid to 30 second notes. It's one thirty seconds. You guys still with me? I know this is a long stretch. In your next step, Highlight one 30-second note before the beginning of the kick grid here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight, remember we're up here where it says length, and it says start, and it says end? We're going to highlight one bar, and it needs to be, uh, I'm sorry, not one bar, uh, one full measure, or I'm sorry, that is one bar, all the way from, that early 32nd before bar two to the equivalent position before bar three. How you know you get there? So what I did is I started, if you look, look on screen for like two seconds, just so you see it. In your next step, I clicked on the 32nd before the kick, and I'm going to highlight all the way to the 32nd before the kick ends. And you know you got there with, when the link says one bar. Now, because I want you to create a uh, four bar phrase, in your next step, I'm gonna have you duplicate this three times. So hitting Command D, one, two, three. Now you're probably going, well, what about that gap? There's an easy fix for that gap now. So you'll tag it one, two, three. In your next steps, so you're just gonna duplicate it three times so we make a, a four bar phrase. What we get to do here is if we triple click it, in your next step, go one, two, three, triple click. In your final step of this group, so your next step, triple click.
And your final step of this, command F. You guys have used the bash fade before. But in this final step, it's command F. Now what the bash fade is going to do to that gap is it's going to make a decision based upon whether that gap has information in it or does not have information in it that allows it to cross over. And that's why it gives this, it's going to give this warning. It'll say, what do you want to do? Do you want to adjust the bounds? Not everything has enough space to have a, a, a valid crossfade. So you just tell it to adjust bounds and you can hit OK. What it's going to do is it's going to do the fade out, fade in from each of those sections. Now the gap, the reason why the kick can get away with a gap that large is because there's nothing going on at that point in time where the kick, is, where the kick resides. Um, nothing audible that'll be noticeable. If we did that with a snare, it'd be a different story because the snare has a lot more decay going on. But the kick typically does not. We're gonna then, in, the, in this next step, you're going to repeat the steps for the hat. Um, I don't know what step you started on where you highlighted the kick on the 30 seconds before. Do you have a number for that? You highlighted the kick at 30 seconds before the period. I know, right? <laughs> it's a lot. What you kick do you have? Hi, when you highlighted the kick, 30 seconds of the period. Did you not have it in there? Oh, uh, 43. Okay, so you're just going to repeat steps 43 through, what was the last one we did? 47? 47 for the hat. Now, what we're, so literally, what we're going to do the same thing for the hat. And the hat, and again, we can't choose it on the grid because we would cut off the front end entrance of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the 30 second before, and the, I'll go all the way to the 30 second before the next group, right? So that when we do this, we choose only one bar, Command D, Command D, Command D, and then the hat is in place. Now, what's the catch with the snare? What are we going to have to do with the snare for the snare to reside the way that it is? but yet you copy paste it. This is where it gets tricky, so it's not as easy as grabbing the bar and copy pasting it. What are we gonna have to do to the snare to make this work for the snare? You, as you can see, look on screen. What was the, what's the offset of the snares? Remember the offset of the snares? How far offset were the snares to the, for the, the kick in the hats? When I had you move it, how, how far did I have you move it back? Yeah, a beat, a, a quarter note. So the snares are actually trailing this, this system by a quarter note. So instead of starting at the grid where everybody else did the copy paste, like I did in the short version I showed you a second ago, instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the 30 second before the snares, and we're gonna go to the 30 second uh, before the snares end. And, and the goal here is to make sure that the, the snares only end up on beats two and four. So if you look up here, bar two, beat two, bar two, beat four. So when I hit duplicate, the goal is to look on screen and see, oh, bar three beat two, bar three beat four, duplicate, bar four beat two, bar four beat four, duplicate one more time. When you do it right, it should look like this. Uh, it should look extended off the back end of the, of the rhythm, just the way you had it a second ago. So what we're gonna do in these steps is you're going to select the snare, one thirty second before bar two beat two, and go all the way so that you have one full bar, highlight it so you have one full bar, and duplicate it three times. I know that last segment is a little bit confusing, right? So maybe I have to run that again. That's why I was thinking I might have to write it on the board for you guys to know what your goal is. Essentially, this, I'll leave this on screen, but this is ultimately the goal is to get your rhythm to look like this. Now, to be honest, you guys could technically make whatever the heck rhythm you want. So it's not the rhythm that's the important part. It's the understanding how to gain certain rhythms. Notice I had to go back to 30 seconds to be able to include the full clip. It's not as easy as just literally copying and pasting the bar as it stood, right? So that's kind of like the bigger deal. And then we, what do we do at the end? Triple click and hit what? Command F and just say, all right, adjust bounds. And then of course, at this point in time, I'm just gonna show this to you so you can see what it is. Now, this is just a basic beat in a four bar segment. Oh, sorry, I didn't highlight all the way to the end of it. Um, if I really wanted to, this is a starting point. If you're like, oh, I love it, but I need, I want to add some extra rhythms. You literally could just go, um, let's say we do this one, copy paste it over here. Oh, 
Sorry, I think I undid it. You kind of see how essentially all you have to do then once it's all the grid is kind of slide them around and build your new rhythms. out once it's on the grid you know and of course you add more rhythms you do more effects with these this is just three simple clips so like once you get into that grid formation you can really start to break it apart and do whatever you want with it once there's a loop the, the beauty of having these individually as samples kick a snare a hat is their configuration of the rhythms between all of them is very unique you can do all sorts of crazy stuff I mean you could even uh, do special effects like let's say we just wanted to go in and where were we? Uh, three. We do it here. You know, a little bit of reverse. You know, that's I just threw that waveform backwards. So I mean, but again, all sorts of stuff. You know, and then the sky's the limit. But you have to understand how to get them cut up. So that's part of your 50 step process that, you, that we just went through there, step by step. So let's go ahead and crank this out. Let's go ahead and start and um, let's plan to get through, here's what I'd like. Get through the first 10 steps, wave your hand at me, and then we'll move on to the next 10 steps. So this is gonna take a little bit of time today. So um, just to get through chunk by chunk, I'll go back and walk you through anything else that needs to be done. Um, and I'm more than happy to make sure you guys successfully make it through this process. Again, it's this is using spot mode, slip mode, grid mode, shuffle mode, uh, the grabber, the editor, uh, the, sorry, the trim and the selector tool. So there's a lot of tools that are being used. Um, go ahead and start with step one. We'll kick off the time here. And let me know when you hit the first 10. Yes? I need the, um, the flash drive. Oh, the flash drive didn't get back? Did you not get the flash drive either?
So in our first few steps, we're just importing these files in, getting the right Zoom levels set up. Did you, you were able to get those? Did you find it? Oh yeah, just like you find that folder. Oh yeah, here. A lot of times they don't have enough bus power. Sorry, Miles, what's up, bud? Oh, this is the stuff that you said. Uh, it's just, I have written down that transfer. Press the key recorder. Sign-in sheet. Where did the sign-in sheet go? Everybody sign in. Uh, uh, Honey, Miles, did you get sign-in? Yeah. All right. If you've done the first ten steps, go ahead and move forward. That way you guys can get jammed. Just let me know if you get stuck in that next sequence. Hey, don't forget to hit command S as you go. Continue to save as you go. If you get some issues, you may have to start over. 